My name is Teacher Rose and our lesson today is God is strong and he helps us. Do you know anyone who is strong? Is your mommy strong? Is your daddy strong? Now I'm going to show you a picture and you're going to tell me who you think is stronger. Look closely at this picture and tell me who you think is stronger. Is it Superman or is it Plankton? Who's stronger? Superman is stronger than Plankton, yes! But today I'm going to tell you of someone that is stronger than Superman. And that's God. God is stronger than Superman. And how do we know that God is strong? The Bible tells us that God is strong. Let's sing a song about the Bible. Do you have your Bible? Quickly, quickly, go look for it. 
We're about to sing the Bible song. Here is my Bible. Do you have your Bible yet? Let's sing the Bible song. Read, read, read your Bible. Read, read, read your Bible. God wants us to know. God wants us to know that it is a special book that it is a special book and he loves us so and he loves us so did you get the song let's sing it one more time holding your bible here we go read 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 your bible read 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 your bible god wants us to know god wants us to know that it is a special book that it is a special book and he loves us so and he loves us so well done what amazing voices you have awesome now i want you to show me your muscles are you strong show me your muscles Wow, you are so strong. Now, God is stronger than Superman. God is stronger than Spider-Man. God is even stronger than, let's see who I have here. Black Panther. God is stronger than Black Panther. And today, we're going to hear a story from the Bible that tells us that God is strong. The story from the Bible talks about a man called Moses and the people of Israel called Israelites. Now, the Israelites lived in the land called Egypt. And the Israelites loved God and they would pray to God. But the Israelites had a mean king. And this mean king's name was Pharaoh. Let's all say together, Pharaoh. And put on a mean face when you're saying Pharaoh. Because he was so mean. Pharaoh was mean. He did not love God. Do you know what he did? He was mean to the Israelites. He would make them pile heavy bricks every day. Now I want you to look for some bricks or something that you will pretend to use as a brick. Look for something in your house and let's pretend to pile some heavy bricks. Go ahead. Get some bricks, some pretend bricks. Here are mine and I'm lifting my bricks. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, so heavy. This mean king made the Israelites work so hard every day. The Israelites worked hard worked so hard and then one day God helped them escape from this mean king but but where did they go to when they escaped God led his people the Israelites to the Red Sea the Red Sea had lots of water and when they reached the Red Sea they were happy, but they didn't have any boats. They didn't even have a ship. And they couldn't swim across the Red Sea with their sheep, their goats, their clothes. What would they do? How would they cross the Red Sea? Then guess what? They heard a sound. And this is the sound they heard. Who was coming? 
coming. They could hear some stomping of feet. Stamp your feet with me. Let's go. And so the Israelites looked behind them. Who did they see coming? <gasps> it was Pharaoh's soldiers. Pharaoh had sent his soldiers to come and get them. Oh no, the Israelites cried. We don't want to go back to lifting the heavy bricks. And they cried out to God. Oh God, you are so strong. Please help us. Do you know what God did? God sent a long cloud that covered the Israelites and the soldiers couldn't see them. The soldiers were wondering where the Israelites had gone. Where have they gone? The soldiers couldn't see the Israelites. And then God told Moses, hold up your arms and use the walking stick. Hold up your arms over the water. Guess what happened? God parted the waters. The waters went this way and that way. They were all in shock. <gasps> Where is the water going? It's as though the water was running away from them. God parted the waters and God made a dry path for them to walk. A dry road in the middle of the sea. Can you imagine being in Mombasa? in the Indian Ocean and then suddenly seeing a road in the middle of Indian Ocean? That's what God did. He parted the waters and made a road for them to walk. Let's walk on the road that God made. Walk with me, everybody. Let's walk. Let's walk through the path that God created. And as we walk, on the side, we can see the water that God has parted. A very high wall of water. And on this side, another very high wall of water. I wonder what the Israelites saw in the water. They must have seen different kinds of fish. All kinds of fish. Let me see whether you know some of these fish. Do you know this fish? Do you remember a movie with this fish in it? This is a clownfish. And the Israelites must have been saying, oh, Look, I've never seen that kind of fish before. And on this side too, they saw other kinds of fish. This is an eel. And they also may have seen a barracuda. God is so strong. He held up the water while the Israelites walked through the water. God is so strong that he held up the water. God helped Moses. God will also help us. Would you like God to help you? I would like God to help me. The Israelites were safe. They walked through the dry water to the other side of the Red Sea. But what happened to the mean soldiers who were hidden by the cloud? Do you know they also tried to cross the Red Sea when they saw that God had made a road through the Red Sea and they got on their horses and they marched through and they started following the Israelites on the dry path that God had created. Oh no, 
Were they going to catch up with the Israelites and take them back to Egypt? Guess what God did? When the mean soldiers were marching on the dry land inside the Red Sea with the high walls on both sides and all the fish, God closed the water. Can you imagine? And he swallowed up the mean soldiers. Glip, glip, swallow up. That's what he did. Shall we try that together, everybody? Let's go. Glip, glip, swallow up. One more time. Glip, glip, swallow up. God made, closed the water and the water swallowed up the mean soldiers. And they were not able to chase the Israelites ever again. Yay! God is so strong. He rescued the Israelites. God hold, held back the Red Sea. Now we're going to sing a song about how God held back the Red Sea. Are we ready? God holds back the big Red Sea. Big Red Sea. Big Red Sea. God holds back the big Red Sea. Ah, God helps us. Let's try it again. God holds back the big Red Sea. Big Red Sea. Big Red Sea. God holds back the big Red Sea. Ah, God helps us. And the second part of this song says, Hurry now and hop across, hop across, hop across. Hurry now and hop across. Ah, God helps us. Let's sing the second part again. Hurry now and hop across, hop across, hop across. Hurry now and hop across. Ah, God helps us. God is so strong. He parted the waters. He sent a cloud that covered the Israelites and he also sent fire to help the Israelites see at night. God is strong. Now let's look at our memory verse today. Our memory verse today comes from Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. Everybody say, Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. The Lord is my strength. Everyone say that. The Lord is my strength. And the reason for my song. Say it again. And the reason for my song, because he has saved me, because he has saved me. Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. Now shall we pray together and ask God who is so strong to help us? Let's put our hands together and pray. Dear God, thank you because you are so strong. You're stronger than Pharaoh when he was so mean. You're stronger than Superman. You're stronger than Spider-Man. And thank you because you're willing to help us. Please help me, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's time for craft. Mummies and daddies, you will find the craft on the Nairobi Chapel website page. Please download it for your children so that they can color it and do all the other activities on it. Thank you for watching today's lesson. It's time to go. 
Bye everyone. Exodus 15:2 A Exodus 15:2 A Exodus 15:2 A Exodus 15:2 A Lord is my strength and the reason for my song The Lord is my strength and the reason for my song The Lord is my strength and the reason for my song Because he because he because he has saved me Hello boys and girls, my name is Teacher Alfreda. I hope you are all excited to join me from home. If you are, please show someone at home a big, big thumbs up. Let them see your thumbs up because all of you can see mine. And before we get started, I want us to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a lovely time that we are going to have in our lesson today. We ask for your blessing and your Holy Spirit to guide us through these lessons. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So today's lesson is a review of the five lessons that we have been learning over the five past weeks. Can anyone remember them? I can imagine you're trying to think right now. But I want us to revise all of them together right now. I have balloons here that we will pop at the end for all the lessons that we can remember. So let's get started. Week one, we learned about Jesus treasures children. And sometimes children hear people say things like, hmm, children should be kept away from here. Oh, mm, we don't need children to be around us right now. Let them go away. But those is, that is not what Jesus thinks about children. God has very different thoughts and treasures each child. He actually does not want children to be kept away from him. So that lesson, what was our memory verse? Hmm, can somebody remember? Can I tell you one word that was in that memory verse? The word is reward. Okay, that memory verse was Psalms chapter 127, verse 3. It says, children are a gift from God. They are a reward from Him. On the second week, let's see what we learned. The title of our lesson was, God uses a boy's meal. Imagine there was a large crowd that was following Jesus. In that crowd, there were 5,000 men and women and children too. And at some point they were all hungry. But then there was a little boy in that crowd that had five loaves and two fish. And you know what? That's what Jesus used. It wasn't a big mommy or a daddy or an auntie. It was just a little boy. And God used that boy's meal to include the boy in his big story. And therefore, boys and girls, in this lesson we learn that God can use you in his big story. And maybe you have been feeling too small or unimportant or like maybe you have nothing to contribute in God's church. You know what? The Bible shows us that each person has something they can contribute in God's big plan. So just like that little boy, we are going to see in our memory verse for that week. And that was the first four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 38. And the memory verse for that lesson was, give and it will be given to you a good amount poured on your lap it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. 
the same amount you give will be measured to you. That was our memory verse for that lesson. At week three, we saw another story and the title was God uses a girl's help. And in that story was a girl called Miriam who showed great care when she stood nearby to make sure her baby brother was okay. So who was Miriam's baby brother? Let me ask, I know all of you know it. Yeah, it was Moses. So she showed great courage when she talked to Pharaoh's daughter and Pharaoh's daughter allowed Miriam to be able to bring her own mother to care for Moses. So it is possible that Miriam would have felt like, maybe I'll be killed, maybe I'll be punished. But that was not what Miriam felt. God gave her the boldness and the courage that she needed. So Miriam showed respect even to her mother when she went back and called her mother to nurse the baby. Miriam was wise, Miriam was good, and then Miriam was quick to make decisions. You too can be quick to make decisions. Awesome. As young as Miriam was, she knew God had created her in his own image and likeness. And you too, God created you in his own image and likeness. And he wants to use you too, boys and girls. So let's hear a scripture that would remind us of this lesson. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Awesome. I know you all know that scripture because we've, ha we've done it over and over. And um, it's all in the creation story as well. But let's see, week four was the most interesting lesson. And we talked about God's kindness. And the title of the lesson was God is kind. The Bible says kindness is a loyal love that shows itself through our actions. And then it also means that God's love for each and every one of us never changes. He has shown it from all his actions. In the beginning, there was a prophecy that he would send a son. And finally, a son was sent. And who was that son? Jesus Christ, who came and lived a perfect life, a sinless life. And guess what? He gave us eternal life for all of us who have believed in him. So God did not just say he's a kind God. He showed us how kind he is because we did not deserve his son who died for us. If in any case, we are the ones who should have been punished for our sin. But out of his kindness, he sent his only son to come and take all our sins and be punished on our behalf so that we can have eternal life. And which scripture did we learn on that week? In the Old Testament now, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse three, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with an unfailing kindness. That's Jeremiah chapter 31, verse three. Now we are in, on the fifth week, boys and girls. And this fifth week was last Sunday. Who remembers what we learned last Sunday? This one, you should remember. It's not too long ago. It says, be kind with your words. Are you being kind with your words at home? Our words we learned that are powerful. And our words show others that we are kind in our heart. The story that we learned about is of a servant girl who lived in Naaman's household and she used her words to speak to Naaman and show Naaman that there was a prophet who could heal Naaman. This little servant girl would have just thought, maybe let me just be silent. Maybe no one will ever listen to me. But she got courage. She just went on and used her kind words to speak to her master and the master got healed in the story. What was the memory verse for that lesson? It came from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. It says, Therefore, 
as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That was our memory verse for last Sunday. Well done, everyone. I want you to pat yourself. We finished all our five-week lessons and memory verse review. And therefore, there is something I told you at the beginning of our lesson. And remember, I said I had balloons right here. And this is how we are going to remember the lessons and the memory verse. And for each and every memory verse, I'm going to pop a balloon and I'm going to see who remembers it at home. The first week, what was our memory verse? Because you need to guess what that memory verse was. And mummies and daddies, please check for me who's getting the right answer. And ta -da! Ta -ta 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 -ta. Right there. That was the memory verse for the first week. And who got it? This pop is for you. There you go. Wonderful. The next memory verse. Let's see who's going to get it. The next memory verse. Let's see who's getting it. Okay, 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 okay. Let's show it. Ta-da! Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Did anyone get it at home? Wonderful. I know this pop is for you. Perfect. The next one was... Let's see who's getting it at home. You have to first try at home before I show it to you. Let's see. It was Genesis chapter... One, verse 27. Did anyone get it at home? Yay! This pop is for you. Wonderful. The next one is... Which verse? Which verse? Let's see again. Did someone get it already? Someone gotten it? Someone gotten it? The next one. Let's see who's getting it. Let's see who's getting it. It is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse Three, awesome, again. Let's do a pop for those people who have got it. Oh, wonderful. It's so much fun, boys and girls. The very, very last one. Everyone needs to get this one. Everyone must get it. And it's which one? Comes from which book? Okay, the very, very last one. Let's see who remembers it. This must be the easiest. And everyone I know can remember this at home. Parents. If any of your children remember at least any parts of our memory verses today, please congratulate them, celebrate them. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. And the very last pop. Thank you. Good job, boys and girls. Wonderful. And I really, really, really celebrate you for the number of scriptures that you're memorizing each Sunday for what we are learning. So we have crafts. And to complement today's lesson, we have craft sheets that are, and our devotionals that you can download from the Nairobi Chapel website. Thank you very much for watching. And we are glad and we hope we can have you again next Sunday online. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the lessons. We thank you for the memory verses that we have learned over the past five Sundays. Lord, we are so grateful that you continue to help us hide your word in our hearts. And Lord, thank you for the boys and girls who have hidden your word in their hearts. And your word becomes a source of encouragement to them, comfort, and even direction to many of them. Father, continue to help us remember everything that we have been taught in all these lessons. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for watching and listening to today's lesson. Until we meet again next time, keep hiding God's word in your heart. Never stop hiding God's word in your heart. And bye-bye.